Welcome to EC Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we have looked at how to magnetize and demagnetize materials. And to magnetize material, we realize that you only change the direction of dipoles in each domain to face in a common axis, hence creating a net magnetic field. And to demagnetize a material, you change the direction of dipoles which are facing in a common direction to different directions, hence destroying the net magnetic field. But the question is, do all materials get magnetized and demagnetized at the same rate? That's what we're going to discuss in this lesson, hard and soft magnetic materials. My name is Albert. I hope you are going to enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe what soft magnetic materials are, how much energy they use to get magnetized or demagnetized, and their applications. Also, you should be able to describe what hard magnetic materials are, how much energy they take to magnetize or to demagnetize, and their few applications in real life. So soft magnetic materials, these are materials that can be easily magnetized, but they do not retain their magnetism for an extended period. So it means if you have a magnetic material here, this is a magnetic material, which the dipoles are facing in different direction in each domain. Like in this case, you can have the dipoles facing in different directions in different domains like that. Now, when you introduce a strong magnetic field, like if you bring a permanent magnet here with a north pole and south pole like this, and you introduce this material up there, now this material due to that magnetic or strong magnetic field, the dipoles will change direction now to face in a common direction due to the field of the magnet that you have just introduced. So in this case, this material will become a magnet north pole and south pole due to the magnetic field of this uh, magnet that we introduced. Remember this magnetic field is going to be concentrated inside that material like that. So this material will become a magnet here. But now if you withdraw, if now you withdraw this permanent magnet, you withdraw, withdraw the magnet, what will happen now? You will remain with this material. Now the dipoles will go back to their original position like this. In the first domain, they were facing up. Second domain, they are facing down. Third domain like that. And then the fourth domain like that. So it means this material will only become a magnet when there is a magnetic field. Once you withdraw, here you have withdrawn your magnetic field. Once you withdraw the magnetic field, once you withdraw the field, the material become demagnetized again. So this nature, all these materials which behaves like this, we call them soft magnetic material, and we are going to see their advantages. And examples of this material in this case is pure iron. Pure iron is a soft magnetic material. And then we have the alloys or the mixture of iron and nickel, which we call the iron nickel alloy. It's also a soft magnetic material. So we have some of the characteristics of soft magnetic material. And the first one is that these materials, they allow magnetic flux. They allow magnetic flux or magnetic field to pass through them efficiently. And this one can be illustrated using a very simple graph here. Like in this case, if you have your Y axis and X axis, in the X axis you have current current or magnetizing current, which in this case where is it's given in ampere and it's a DC current, direct current. It means it's a current which we are going to use to magnetize. And then in the Y axis, we have the strength, strength of the magnet, all of the electromagnet formed. So initially when the current is zero, 
the magnetic field also or the strength of this magnet which will be formed will be zero then now we are going to increase the current from one two three four ampere five ampere then now we will be monitoring the field which will be formed let's say the, the strength will be one two three four five and six so in this case for these materials when you just increase a small amount of current the magnetic field or the strength of the magnet will increase significantly within a very short amount of current and then it will reach a point where this material will not be magnetized anymore where it becomes flat so at this point we will say this material has attained what we call magnetic saturation so at the magnetic saturation remember we said at this point the dipoles cannot be aligned anymore so at this point it would attain magnetic saturation and i want to uh, what i want you to notice that these soft magnetic materials they attain magnetic saturation very fast within a very small amount of current which is applied so also these materials they require minimal energy to demagnetize it means if you withdraw this current the dipoles will go back to their original position within a very short time and you don't even need energy to bring it back to zero so when you withdraw the current now you withdraw the current current comes to zero also the strength of this magnet will go back to zero so the concept of soft magnetic materials magnetizing easily and demagnetizing easily has a very wide application especially in making of electromagnets electromagnets these are temporary magnets we're going to discuss them in the next topic these are temporary magnets and these temporary magnets are used widely especially they can be used in electric bells like the one that you can see on the screen this is an electric bell where we're going to use this u-shaped material which is a magnetic material then we connect it to a dc source direct current so when we switch on the switch it's going to get magnetized at this point become north pole and south pole then it's going to attract this what we call the soft soft ion armature when it attracts the soft ion armature this armature will move together with this hammer this is the hammer here and it will hit this what we call a gong we're going to discuss this in the next topic so the property of this material magnetizing very fast as you switch on the switch attracting this one and then makes the bell to ring and immediately you switch off the switch it will lose magnetism it will release this armature with the hammer and then the bell will stop ringing so they are used widely in electromagnets they are also used in transformer cores we are going to discuss this in form 4 and then they are also used in magnetic shielding remember what we discussed in magnetic shielding where we protect some regions from being invested by mag external magnetic field so since soft magnetic materials uh, get magnetized easily or they can concentrate the magnetic field within themselves then they can be used in magnetic shielding so the second category of materials that we have is hard magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials are difficult to magnetize very difficult to magnetize but once they gain magnetism they retain their magnetism for a very long time a good example of these materials that we have is steel steel is the commonly used hard magnetic material so some of the characteristics of this hard magnetic material is that hard magnetic material requires significant energy to be magnetized they require a lot of energy to be magnetized and if we have a graph like the one that we had in the soft magnetic material with our y axis and the x axis in the x axis we have current current in amperes that is dc current this is the one which can magnetize and then in the y axis we have the strength the strength of the magnet which is formed and in this case we can have a scale we have a zero then the current we have one ampere two ampere three then we have four five and six and then the strength of the magnet 
which will be formed we can have as one two three four five six so in this case as you increase as you increase this current from one to two this the strength of the magnet which will be formed will be very small so it will take a lot of current for this material to attain magnetic saturation so in this case it will attain magnetic saturation but here magnetic saturation is attained after this material has gained a lot of uh, current or has used a lot of current like in this case it has used six amperes to gain magnetic saturation at this point where it cannot be magnetized anymore we call it magnetic saturation so it has consumed six amperes for it to attain magnetic saturation and now since you use a lot of energy to turn the dipoles to face in a common direction it will also take a lot of energy to return the dipoles back to their original position so it means this material once it get magnetized it cannot be demagnetized easily and this one is the one that we use to make permanent magnets so we have some of the applications of hard magnetic materials and hard magnetic materials are used to make magnets which are used in various applications like in the refrigerator magnets we also have electric motor magnets which we are going to discuss in the next topic and then we have the loudspeaker magnets the loudspeaker you can see them on the screen the magnets which are found in these loudspeakers are that of permanent magnets and permanent magnets are made from hard magnetic materials that's why they retain magnetism for a very long time so following the characteristics that we have discussed of these two materials we can have or we can draw a graph of current against the magnetization or the alignment of dipoles in each domain so in this case even the x-axis we have the magnetizing current here we have this current in ampere this is direct current then here in the y-axis we have magnetization magnetization of the material of the material this means the rate at which the dipoles are aligning themselves in the domains so if we have a scale of current as one two three four five six and seven then the rate at which the dipoles align as one two three four five six let's say the maximum alignment can be six that is the magnetic saturation at six then what will happen for a soft magnetic material once you increase current from zero to one or two the dipoles will align all of them will align in a common axis so for a soft magnetic material this is a soft magnetic material this one will attain magnetic saturation as soon as current is switched on the point where you cannot magnetize anymore this we call it magnetic saturation but for so in this case it has only used three amperes within three amperes of current it has attained magnetic saturation but for a hard magnetic material we are going to realize that it's going to consume a lot of current for it to attain magnetic saturation this is for a hard magnetic material hard magnetic material so you can see for it to attain magnetic saturation it has even consumed something more than the scale that we have here if we can extend this scale on the x-axis and goes to 8 9 10 and 11 therefore this one has consumed about 10 amperes or 9 point something for it to attain magnetic saturation where it cannot align anymore so in this case it means this material takes a lot of energy to be magnetized and it's a hard magnetic material 
The one which will only take an energy of 3 amperes to be magnetized, that is a soft magnetic material. So if you are given a graph to interpret, then you will look at it in that angle. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss the storage of magnets and the provisional application of magnets.